Okay, welcome pirates. Here is uh, one of the last lectures on covalent bonding. We're going to talk about the effects of intermolecular forces. Uh, you have learned about the types of intermolecular forces. You've learned how to identify the types of intermolecular forces. Now we have to uh, learn how they interact with each other. Uh, by the way, intermolecular forces, uh, we're going to save some syllables and we're going to call them I, M, Fs, okay. Um, so I'll be referring to them as IMFs from here on out. And just a reminder: types of IMFs. You have weak ones. You have strong ones. The weakest ones are the London forces. You have dipole dipoles, and then the strongest are hydrogen bonds. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind as we progress. If you need to review that, please go back one lecture or two, I can't remember, uh, but you can check it out and learn about it. Uh, so ways that IMFs can affect uh, substances. Boiling point is one of them, okay? So boiling point is going from a liquid to a gas uh, with the addition of heat. Uh, so basically, I like this picture because what it's showing is you have... Uh, all of these molecules or atoms touching, and then they break apart when they boil. Well, if we're talking about IMFs and we're seeing them as, let's just say, magnets, well, if they're very strong magnets, it's going to be very difficult to pull them apart, okay? And if it's difficult to pull them apart, it's going to take a really long time, uh, in this analogy, to boil then, okay? I'd have to add a ton of energy, a ton of heat to get that thing to boil. So... Uh, I move down, I see this data table, and I'd say, okay, I have a whole bunch of compounds. All of their IMFs, they are all London forces. Okay, so there's nothing different there. They're all the same type of bond. I look at these bonds. Uh, one easy way, remember, when it's just carbon and hydrogen, those are called hydrocarbons. And... Any time you have a hydrocarbon, it is nonpolar, meaning it's going to form a London bond, London force. Um, if you go back, you'll go through all the, the math and how to actually calculate that and the vectors and all that good stuff. But really quick and easy, if you see C and H, I don't care if it is nice and simple like this one or if it's giant like this one, it is going to be nonpolar. Okay? What we notice here is that we have these masses... And the way we get the masses is we look at the periodic table. And hopefully uh, I don't have mine at quick access. Uh, let me get it. Sorry. My apologies. Uh, so in order to do this, we would go back to my IMFs. And I have uh, CH4. I would find carbon. Its molar mass is 12. And then I have four H's way over here. Each of those is worth one. So that gives me a total of 16. Now, I know there's a very fast lesson, uh, but that number, that's where we're getting that number from. That's something we'll go into in more depth later. Um, but what we want to look at is we simply want to say, and even visually, we can see that these get bigger physically larger. There's more stuff as I go down that column. It goes from one carbon uh, up to four carbons. And if I look here are my boiling points, I could see that my boiling points are increasing. It goes from negative 160, which is very, very cold, to zero, which is still cold, but relatively speaking, much warmer than negative 160. Okay, so uh, what I could see that is my... Um, size increases, so does the strength. It's like gravity, okay? The larger the planet, uh, generally speaking, the larger the planet, the more gravity it's gonna have, okay? Um, and so the same thing happens with molecules. If everything else is the same, if they have the same type of IMF, the larger the molecule, uh, the stronger the force, and the higher the boiling point, okay? Now, we also have this list here we've talked about. Okay, London's being the weakest, hydrogen bonds being the strongest. If I look at a table that has different types okay, of IMFs, so I'll look at this column right here, London force, dipole, and hydrogen bonds. Well, 
I can look at my boiling points and say, oh, hydrogen bonds have the highest boiling point. London forces have the weakest boiling point. Again, these are weak. These are strong. Okay, so the stronger the bond, the, um, the higher the boiling point. The weaker the bond, the lower the boiling point. Okay, uh, so again, we're looking at how they interact with each other, not necessarily identifying them. Again, if you need to know how to identify them, you got to go back a lecture or two. Um, boiling point, generally, okay, uh, in, a, in a summary here, boiling point increases as the strength of the intermolecular force increases. So... I like this summary here best. Substances with stronger IMFs have higher boiling points. So hydrogen bonds are going to be the strongest or the largest molecules are going to be the strongest. Okay. Let's look at evaporation. Very, very similar to boiling. Okay. It's just evaporation. You're just not adding, uh, actively adding heat to it. Okay. Very similar. If I leave a cup out uh, for a couple of weeks, everything inside that cup is going to evaporate. If I take that cup and I put it on top of a stove, it's going to boil and it's all going to leave also. It just depends how much energy I'm adding to it and how fast I want that uh, reaction to happen. Uh, so uh, we can look at these pictures and these pictures just show kind of like a time lapse. Here's cyclohexane. Uh, cyclohexane's uh, volume drops very quick. Water remains fairly similar. It barely changes. Okay, not a very straight line. I guess I could snap. Oh, look at that. I didn't even know I could do that. Okay, it makes a very straight line. Okay, it doesn't drop. Like I said, if you had water in a cup, you're going to have to leave it there for weeks for it all to evaporate. Cyclohexane, which we have dealt with in class, um, cyclohexane is going to evaporate very fast. Uh, nail polish remover. Okay, nail polish remover evaporates very quickly. Okay, uh, if I get my hand wet, it takes a long time to dry off. If I get nail polish remover on me, if I blow on it, it's gone. Okay, so let's picture evaporation again. Uh, we're look. I, I like to look at these as magnets. If I have very strong magnets, it's going to be very difficult uh, for these molecules to rip off. If I have very weak magnets, they'll rip off very fast, uh, and you'll have fast evaporation. Uh, so we have to look at again. Um, like let's say I look at these structures right here. Uh, this structure, I have one. Hi, sorry. One hydrogen bonding site, I have two here and I have three here. How do I know that? This right here, hydrogen touching, uh, an, oh, one, two hydrogen bonding sites. One, two, three hydrogen bonding sites. So this will be the weakest. This will be the strongest. Again, they're all strong because they're all hydrogen bonds, okay? but I still can rank them. One's hydrogen bond is going to be weaker than three hydrogen bonding sites. Um, so this one uh, will evaporate uh, fastest and this one will evaporate slowest. Okay. Um, and again, here's my general rule here. Evaporation rates increase as the strength of the molecular force decreases. Summary, uh, substances with stronger IMFs evaporate slower. Solubility, last rule, okay? So, so far we've talked about boiling point, higher the IMF, higher the boiling point. Evaporation, uh, higher the IMF, uh, slower evaporation. So the wording gets weird, and I, and I wanna review that. Um, let's go back all the way up to boiling, okay? Uh, okay. Substances with stronger IMFs, higher boiling points. So if I have a strong IMF, it takes a lot of energy to break that off. It's going to take a long time to boil. If I have a strong IMF, okay, another again, strong IMF, it's going to take a long time to evaporate. So we just have to make sure we keep that wording straight when we look at it. Solubility, okay. Um, solubility of liquids. Now, when we talk about this, I like if we kind of skip down a little bit to this picture, okay? Those liquids are insoluble. There's a little caveat there because there's a, two things possibly going on there. Uh, 
oil and water. We know oil and water don't mix. We know that because we're humans and someone has said that to us at some point in our lives. Oil and water do not mix. The reason they don't mix, okay, is that they have different polarities. That wouldn't be as good of a saying because uh, no one's going to listen to it. But we look at these, okay, these pictures here. Um, this is, these two pictures are, some, are two things that are soluble. Okay, they mix together. You wouldn't, this is not oil and water. The easiest way to say it, this is oil. This is water. They don't mix, okay? Uh, the reason um, they don't mix, again, is because they have different polarities. So, if I have, again, now I'm dealing with cyclohexane and water, okay? Uh, cyclohexane has two things. It has a lower density, okay, than water. Okay, so cyclohexane, since less dense, is going to go towards the top. It's going to float. More dense is going to go towards the bottom. Okay? Um, as I look at these experiments, I kind of move down here. Experiment one. This says, let's look at two different polar liquids. I know they're polar because I can identify this hydrogen bond. And I can identify this has two hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are always polar. Okay? Uh, when I mix them together, they mix. I, I only get one layer. Nothing happens. Okay? So what would happen if two non... Whoa. Whoa, boy. Now we've gone and done it, guys. What would happen if two non-polars mixed? Uh, they mix. Okay? One layer. They actually mix. Okay? Nothing all that exciting. Let's look at experiment two. Wow, these structures look crazy. Okay, here's the neat thing about these structures. We've talked about this. If I have hydrocarbons, only carbon and hydrogen, these are both gonna be nonpolar. Okay, I don't have to do any work. I know they look very intense, but they're not. Okay, in terms of polar nonpolar forces. Okay, so if I mix two nonpolars together, they're going to uh, dissolve each other again. The key is, like dissolves like. So polar will dissolve polar, nonpolar will dissolve nonpolar. Uh, oil and water do not mix. Why do oil and water not mix? Well, because one is nonpolar and one is polar. Hey, Palatine Chemistry, just a little bonus. I wanted to go over just two quick questions here on some of the homework questions or practice questions uh, for the effects of IMFs. Just to get some of this stuff cleared up, I want to look at question eight and nine. There's plenty here. I just want to look at two and move on. So uh, which of the following substances will evaporate the slowest? Here's what I feel is the most important thing to do before you do anything. You need to be able to figure out, does it want it uh, the weakest or the strongest? So if it's evaporating the slowest, you need to understand that that means it's going to be the strongest. Whoa. Very large marker. The strongest structure. If it's going to evaporate the slowest, it'll be the weakest. So I think that's very important to understand. Hey, just figure out, does it want the strongest or does it want the weakest? Usually it's going to ask for an extreme, okay? Um, or it's going to ask you to basically rank them strongest to weakest. So now that I know I am looking for the strongest, I'm hoping it's gonna give me some hydrogen bonds. I know hydrogen bonds are the strongest. It'd be great if they gave me some hydrogen bonds. Wow, these look really similar. And to get you focused, these are what we're looking at. Wow, those look really similar. How am I gonna tell those apart? They look like the same thing. Here's the important part. That tells me that I have a hydrogen bond. Okay, hydrogen bonded directly to an H. This tells me I have two hydrogen bonds. I'll write that down. So this has a hydrogen bond. That's a really big marker again. Sorry about that. It's kind of annoying. This has a hydrogen bond. This has two hydrogen bonds. And I know that because that little two right there. Uh, this is nonpolar. I mean, it's going to have London forces. And again, how I know that is just carbon and hydrogen. Anytime you have a hydrocarbon, 
it's going to be nonpolar. So this, if I change up my colors a little bit, this is my weakest. He's out of the running. He'll evaporate very fast. So I can put that up there too, fast. So it's between one of these two guys. And since this has two hydrogen bonds, this then becomes my strongest. And we'll, whoa, sorry about that folks. Don't know what happened. Um, whoa, all my work, <laughs> that all got erased. I'm not gonna redo it. Um, we're here. This has, sorry about that, don't know what happened. This has two hydrogen bonds and it's strong and it evaporates slowest. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, even though we lost that, that was funny. Um, let's look at number nine, which of the following will uh, dissolve in water? Okay, if it's asking you to, if it's going to dissolve or not. Let's get this out of here, just some room. The rule is like dissolves like, meaning polar dissolves polar, nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. So what we need to know is that water is polar. That's something you need to know. It just, you need to know water is polar. You can look at the structure or whatever, but you need to know water is a polar structure. So that means I'm looking for a polar structure, okay? I know H bonds and dipoles, dipole, two poles, polar. Uh, H bonds and dipoles are polar structures. I like to eliminate any nonpolars first. That's nonpolar. We've talked about this. Carbon and hydrogen only means it's going to be nonpolar. That means he's nonpolar. He's out. Okay. It gives me two that have oxygens in there. This one is showing me a hydrogen bond. This one does not necessarily, well, let me put it this way. It definitely does not have a hydrogen bond. It could be polar, but I would have to do some more work. This one, I know for a fact, will be polar. So this one will be most likely to dissolve. 